Imagine this, in the foreseeable future, Apple is gonna reveal a device that will surpass the M2 MacBook Air. Better display, better camera, it's more compact, and it's quite possible Apple may introduce it this year. The M2 MacBook Air turned out to be a beautiful and powerful device, and I don't know why, but Apple has once again made the Air model better than the 13-inch Pro. A similar thing happened when the M1 came out, and, and Apple revealed the MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which are almost the same in terms of performance, but the Air was lighter and cheaper. This year, Apple went the same way, introducing the M2 and upgrading two devices at once, 13-inch Air and Pro. Someone would argue that the M2 MacBook Air killer is the M2 Pro, but we made a separate video on this topic, so just click here. And Apple could present a real competitor to the M2 Air already this year. I'm talking about the upgraded iPad Pro based on the new M2 chip. And you can go to the comments section and say that this is impossible, you cannot compare iPad and MacBook, but what if I tell you that the upgrade of iPadOS to version 16 and the addition of Stage Manager was done for a reason. In the Stage Manager mode, four applications can be launched simultaneously on the iPad, and a few more applications can be opened in the side menu on the left. The same feature has appeared in the new macOS Ventura. Unfortunately, the new feature will only work on three iPad models, iPad Air 5th generation and iPad Pro 3rd and 5th generation. In other words, only M1 iPads. Guys from Cupertino explained this point by saying that Stage Manager uses virtual RAM or virtual swap in iPadOS 16. It allows you to convert regular memory into RAM. Each program can request up to 16 gigabytes of memory and Stage Manager allows you to run up to eight applications simultaneously. Stage Manager requires a lot of resources Sources to work properly, and only the M1 processor could handle this. Most likely, the arrival of the Stage Manager is to bring the experience of using iPadOS closer to the experience of using macOS. What if the merge of two operating systems happens very soon? Previous versions of iPadOS already allowed you to open three active applications, and in some scenarios, it was possible to run up to four apps. For example, two applications could be in the split view mode, the third app via the slide over, and the fourth via the picture-in-picture -picture mode. On top of this, the entire area of the iPad screen was used from edge to edge. If you try to launch four applications via Stage Manager, part of the screen will be occupied by the dock panel, this side menu with applications, or just an empty space between the windows. Can we call it an innovation? Is it really convenient to work with multiple applications with this mode? In my opinion, this is a trick for the sake of a trick, but there is one big but that Apple is silent about so far. And the thing I have been silent about so far is setup. They're kindly sponsoring today's video, and the bottom line is that it helps you to stay organized and makes your workflow more efficient. Setup helps you stay productive with dedicated productivity tools and apps that empower you to tackle tasks easier, faster, and more efficiently. For example, one of the apps I use all the time is Yoink. It basically allows you to bring the drag and drop feature to the next level. It works like a temporary shelf to hold files. So once you start moving one of your files, this pop-up window appears. Now drag the file inside, then open a new folder and drag the file to the new folder. Makes your life so much easier. We do a lot of MacBook benchmarking on this channel and there are some must-use apps for our team. One of these apps is called iStat Menus. It's extremely useful if you want to monitor exactly what your Mac is doing. For example, the CPU and GPU usage. So if your computer is slowing down, this will help you determine the cause. Even if you're not into stats and technical information about your computer, one day it will help you a lot. Or Al Dente Pro to set my battery charging limits and prolong my battery's lifespan. To experience all of setup functionality, countless apps for taking on your daily tasks, and app recommendations to help you discover the tools to improve your workflow, check out the link in the description below. The thing is that the new iPad Pro and Air, which were introduced last year, have the M1 processor. They are absolutely the same in performance as the M1 MacBook Air. That is, technically, the iPad can now perform the same features and run the same applications as the MacBook Air. But why does the M1 iPad not support apps from macOS? The question is still in the air, but here's a simple answer for you. Apple wants to separate macOS and iPadOS by use cases, so that we get two completely different devices with different positioning and big sales. 
obviously. This is all well thought out marketing, but apparently something went wrong. For example, let's remember the A12Z in iPad Pro 2020. Users have a question. Why switch to new iPads with the M1 chip if the potential of past chips is not fully disclosed? The audience staged a ride, a lot of negative reviews, and quite realistically, for this reason, iPadOS with Stage Manager was announced at the WWDC in order to somehow show that Apple heard the cries of dissatisfied users. That is us. And if the stage manager only works on M1 iPads, it's not really practical. And at the same time, Apple has also added this feature to the new macOS Ventura. And we're getting close to the answer, but first, let's wrap our heads around this. If before that, users didn't want to switch from the iPad Pro 2020 to the new 2021, due to the fact that such power is simply not needed, then who wants to switch from the iPad Pro M1 to the iPad Pro M2? And here I think, Apple came up with a surprise. Exclusively for the new iPad Pro based on M2 chips, where desktop applications and updated file system will be available. It may seem strange from Apple that it breaks its own rules, but let's face it. If you reveal the iPad Pro this year just with an upgraded processor, then it will be one of the most failed Apple products. It will have extremely low sales and Apple course will not shoot itself in the foot, so together with a stable iPadOS 16, we probably will get support for desktop applications on the M2 iPad Pro. But that's not all. There are rumors that Apple is developing an iPad Pro with mini LEDs and a 14.1 inch ProMotion display. It was reported by analyst Ross Young, and it should also get the M2 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and at least 512 SSD. Also, the iPad will have smaller bezels, but two smaller models are expected before it. The 11-inch iPad Pro with the M2 chip and minimal design changes, as well as the 12.9-inch model with thin bezels. All these models are expected to take place at the October or November event this year. This was reported by Insider Majin. And just at this event, Apple might reveal the iPad Pro with the ability to launch desktop applications. And if you add a keyboard to this iPad, you will get a real M2 MacBook Air killer. Why, would you ask? Here's why. If we take the 2021 12.9 inches M1 iPad Pro with the Apple keyboard and compare it with the new M2 MacBook Air, then we'll realize that the iPad Pro has many features that the Air simply doesn't have. But there is one big downside. You can run desktop applications on the iPad. But now let's directly compare the M2 MacBook Air and the future M2 12.9 inches iPad Pro. It's gonna be hot. I'm gonna compare everything except performance tests since they have the same chips and the results will be about the same. Here is the weight and dimensions of the new MacBook Air and the weight and dimensions of the 12.9 iPad Pro. It turns out that with a smaller display, you will get a lighter and more compact device, and you won't feel much difference in the size of the displays. The M2 MacBook Air works up to 18 hours, while the iPad Pro works up to nine hours. This is half as much, but don't forget that you get a more compact device, and even nine hours is enough for a common working day. By the way, if there is a need for charging, then the new M2 iPad Pro will support 67 watts fast charging and it will take the same time to charge up to 50% as the new MacBook Air, so 30 minutes. The iPad Pro with the XDR display completely destroys the MacBook Air with IPS and 500 nits because the peak brightness in the new iPad is up to 600 nits. This is three times more than the MacBook Air can do. With this display, you can work even in direct sunlight. If you want to work the same way with the M2 Air, then you just won't see anything but your beautiful face on the display. By the way, the contrast ratio of the iPad is 1 million to 1. Apple does not declare the contrast of the M2 MacBook Air display, so we can only assume that it's also about three times worse here. The iPad has a built-in wide-angle full HD 12 megapixels camera. The M2 Air, on the other hand, has a regular camera, but also full HD. The ultra-wide in the iPad allows you to implement the center stage feature. The bottom line is that the camera frames your image in real time so that you're in the center of the shot. The MacBook Air doesn't have that, but there's something else. In the new version of macOS, it will be possible to use the iPhone camera as a MacBook webcam. For this, you just need to attach the iPhone to the MacBook using a special mount. However, this solution is hardly innovative. Imagine that during a call, you will need to use a smartphone and then 
what will you do? Therefore, in terms of the front-facing camera, the iPad definitely wins. Well, the key point is that you can touch the screen of the M2 iPad and use Apple Pencil. The MacBook Air doesn't have this. And this is a very, very big downside for some users. Just imagine that you wanna create a draft on iPad and then do the final work in Illustrator on a MacBook. This is at least time to transfer files, although it won't take you long, but now you don't need to have two devices to work because the new M2 iPad Pro can now run desktop applications via Stage Manager. Can you imagine the savings? About $900? This is a significant amount of money. About 9% in this video are rumors, everything else is the fruit of my imagination, which perfectly fits the title of this video, so honestly, I'll be fucking pissed if everything I said today turns out to be true. But just how cool it sounds, M2 iPad Pro with support for desktop applications. And check out this video and this one, smash the like button if you like this one, and see you in the next one.